When it comes to the Grim Life Collective, I feel like it's been quite some time since we've done a video on the mob. With that being said, living here in Southern California, there's a very famous gangster that we have have yet to cover. Well, today, we're gonna do that. Today, this video is all about the life, and more importantly, the death of Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Bugsy Siegel's final resting place is here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Hollywood, California, not too far from where Jessica and I live. It's a, it's a place that we go to quite a bit, and surprisingly, in the four years that we've lived here, we haven't shown, I don't think we've shown, where he's at. But today, inside the cemetery in a mausoleum far in the back, there are three things, three points of interest that I want to show you guys, and then from here, we're going to head out to Beverly Hills where Bugsy Siegel was murdered. When it comes to famous gangsters, Bugsy Siegel is probably one of the most famous. I mean, his name is right up there with Al Capone and Lucky Luciano. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, and supposedly he really hated the name Bugsy. The nickname that was given to him because he was a basically a very Bugsy kind of person. He was a, the type of person that when he wanted something done, he felt the best way to do it was to do it himself. He had to be there, and he was kind of a wiry person that was very good with guns, had a reputation for being pretty brutal, and at the same time, it was really hard to get close to him because of all of this, which led to, well, ultimately his demise. Now, in the back of Hollywood Forever Cemetery in this mausoleum, there are three points of interest that I want to point out that all have to do with, well, his downfall. The first one being right here as soon as you walk in. I'm going to walk over to it. I just want to give you the scope of things. Now, I know we came here for Bugsy Siegel, but this is also the final resting place of a man by the name of Mo Sedway. And he is right here. Beloved husband and father died in 1952, forever in our hearts. You can see right here, got four twos. Now, Mo Sedway, I don't know if he was a close friend with Bugsy Siegel or at least a business partner, but Bugsy and Mo were one of the first people to go out to Las Vegas back before the casinos were beautiful and the hotels were beautiful. In fact, whenever they got there, it was pretty run down. And Bugsy is credited for kind of seeing what Las Vegas would become. Like, it was almost like a mirage. So him and Mo, and there was another guy, I think his name was Greenbaum, not too sure on the name, head out to Vegas and they buy up some land. I think it was like the El Cortez Hotel. And so it begins. Now, interesting enough, when Bugsy Siegel was murdered, Mo almost immediately took ownership. Yeah, there's, a, there's a crazy little stories about that. After buying the El Cortez Hotel in Las Vegas, they, they had their, their roots in the town, and they wanted to make it grow because gambling was legal at this time in Las Vegas. And they came across somebody who was building a hotel that is now the Flamingo. Siegel, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't the first person to you know, break ground but while it was being built, he kind of just showed up and with his glitz and glamour, he was always dressed really nicely, he pretty much walked in and said, I'm investing in this place. Him and a couple other people, the mob stepped in, 
the Flamingo, and they said, we're gonna take over and we're gonna build this. We're gonna make it the best hotel, basically, in the world, or at least the very least, the desert. I remember reading somewhere that the budget for the Flamingo underneath Bugsy Siegel was around a million dollars. And he said that he can get this hotel done and up and running in under a year. Now at the time of opening, the Flamingo cost $4 million and people were mad, especially the mob. And it didn't help that on opening night, which was in December, there was this torrential downpour. I mean, it rained and all these different celebrities from Los Angeles and Hollywood that were gonna come out didn't. And the hotel wasn't opened all the way. There were parts that were still closed and under construction and, and they lost a lot of money. And ultimately, it is believed that this is what brought the end of Bugsy Siegel. Now, what you're looking at right now is an M1, M2, and M3. This is the corridor where you'll find Bugsy Siegel. But if you're a Rocky fan, in Rocky Part 3, this is also where Mickey's funeral was held. And this is him right here. In loving memory from the family, Benjamin Siegel, February 28th, 1906, to June 20th, 1947. That's the night that he was murdered here in Beverly Hills. Pretty wild, right? And there's always stuff here. So there's pennies, let me lift the camera up a little bit. And of course there's bullet casings, poker chips, dice, lipstick kisses. So how did Bugsy Siegel die on June 20th, 1947? Well, he was staying at a house that was being leased by his girlfriend, a woman by the name of Virginia Hill. She was leasing a house in Beverly Hills. And that particular night, Siegel and a friend of his were sitting on the couch in the living room, reading the newspaper, I don't know, watching TV, talking, something like that, when an unknown assailant snuck up the driveway of the house next to him, peered through the living room window, and shot Siegel and killed him. Died almost instantly. The crime scene photos are brutal. I'm not gonna show them here. You're more than welcome to, to Google them after this, but be warned. Now, the killer was never caught. In fact, the death of Siegel, if I'm not mistaken, is still open. Nobody knows who did it. Some people say that it was a very cowardly thing to do, but in my research of Siegel, he couldn't get close to the man. If you did and you were on his bad side, I mean, he ticked a lot of people off, especially with running the bill of the Flamingo up for $4 million. But if you were on his bad side, he had no problem taking you out. Yeah. I read all kinds of different things on what could have been, like different theories as to why he was killed. Some say he just had no idea that basically other mobsters, other people played him and he was just not as smart as he thought he was. And then whenever you know, everything went down with the Flamingo, they just had enough and took him out. Other stories say that he skimmed money in building a casino. And other people say that it was Virginia Hill, his love interest, and other people say that it was Virginia Hill and Siegel that skimmed money, and that's what got him killed. But this is it, and the crazy thing about this, this is a Jewish part of the cemetery, and supposedly behind here, at the time, I mean, come on, 1947, whenever Siegel was put in here, they spent $5,000 on a silver casket, so supposedly behind all this is a silver casket, which is unusual for Jewish families. If you've been watching The Grim Life for quite some time, you know that I love Hollywood history, how things just kind of overlap, that as years pass, certain buildings, certain areas kind of mend together, metal together. The same thing with where Bugsy Siegel died. We're going to head over to the, to the mansion that was leased by Virginia Hill right now. It's over in Beverly Hills. And right across the street from it 
is something else. It's going to blow your mind. I'm going to touch on it a little bit, but it's going to be a topic of another video somewhere down the line. This is definitely one of my favorite mausoleums in Hollywood Forever Cemetery, especially this piano up here. I feel like we filmed this little area quite a bit. All right, off to Beverly Hills. Today is really turning out to be a beautiful day. I heard that it was supposed to be like 100 degrees, so I came out early, extra early. Usually I try to get out by eight o'clock in the morning to film. But right now I am walking up North Linden Drive in Beverly Hills. The house right ahead of me is 810, and this is where Bugsy Siegel was murdered. If you look closely, you can see the different signs right there to the left of your screen. Talk about no trespassing and the security signs, ADT. But this is it. This is the house Virginia Hill was leasing back whenever Siegel was murdered. And right over here, you can see those windows right there on the bottom. That's the living room where Siegel was sitting, where somebody came up the driveway. I'm gonna show you the driveway in just a moment. They peered through the window and then they shot him. So like I said, it is believed that somebody walked up the driveway of the neighboring house and peered through the window and that's whenever everything went down. Now the driveway directly next to those windows in that house is this one right here, 808 North Linden Drive. And just looking at it, if I come back over this way, I mean, just standing here, I can look directly into that, those windows right there. No wonder he had a, such a clean shot. It's a beautiful house, right? Now, I also mentioned that there is something else that happened here. That's something that, that histories meld together. They weave together. Now, over here at this intersection, there's so much stuff I can tell you guys. But this is going to really blow your mind. At least it did mine. Right now, I'm still on North Linden Drive. And if I were to go down about six houses on the right, that's where Bugsy Siegel's murder house is. So a little further down the road is 805. Now this house right here been, it has been extensively remodeled, but back in 1946, famed aviator Howard Hughes crashed his plane here in Beverly Hills and it hit one of these houses. Well, it hit this house and another one. There's two houses that were mainly involved in the crash. This one here, when you read up on it back in 1946, this is the one where the plane, the wing, sliced through a bedroom as the couple was sleeping. Crazy, right? Like all in the same area. Now, of course, the plan wasn't to crash an airplane into residential homes. There was a problem. I think it was like an engine issue. And Howard Hughes planned on making a crash landing on a golf course. That golf course is actually a couple streets over that way. So this is one of the houses. At some point, I'd like to get out here and just do a, a proper video tracking down everything. Now, supposedly there's an alleyway behind here that I want to, I'm going to do my best to line up something, something I want to see. I was going to save it for that video, but I figure since we're here talking about this, let's see if it lines up, a crash photo. I don't want to get too deep into the world of Howard Hughes because this is a video about Bugsy Siegel. But in preparation for that video, I wanted to see if this alleyway was accessible, and it is. The alleyway I'm walking right now is directly between North Whittier Drive and North Linden Drive. Siegel's murder house is to the left. Now in 1946, Howard Hughes, was, he crashed his plane coming in from the left. And there's a photo that was taken from here in this driveway well, this alleyway, from right about here. Howard Hughes, famous flyer and sportsman, was dragged out of this wreckage of an experimental plane he was testing. He was seriously injured. After ripping the corner from two homes in Beverly Hills, California, the plane finally plunged into this house. The force of the impact virtually wrecked the building and caused the plane to catch fire. The flyer said that the accident was due to motor failure shortly after his takeoff. He failed to make a crash landing on a golf course. 
Dennis O'Keefe, film actor, inspects damage done the home of Lieutenant Colonel Myers, chief interpreter at the Nuremberg War Trials. America's aviation trailblazers willingly pay the price in man's conquest of the air. I know it's a little hard to see with the sun, but right where this brick wall is, there were a row of trees, and in this photo you can see the debris from the plane crashing. Now what's really interesting, you see that telephone pole right there? It's almost in the exact spot that the telephone pole was back in 1946 whenever the plane cut it in half. You see, this is the kind of walking history that I absolutely love. Yes, there are tons of movie history here, TV shows, music, but there's so much more to that. I mean, where else in the world where else in one particular video can you walk one street over and go from the murder house of Bugsy Siegel to one of the most famous plane crashes in history? Crazy, right? Now here's the thing about all of this. This area of Beverly Hills is very strange. There's even a, a little moment, a little spot. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna show it in this video. I'll show it at a different time. That is known as the Beverly Hills Triangle. It's kind of like the Bermuda Triangle, but out here in Southern California. But come on, how awesome is this? Right now I'm standing where Howard Hughes crashed his plane on both sides of all of this. And you know what, it's, it deserves a video all on its own. I spent a quite a deal of time researching and trying to figure out where exactly certain photos were, were taken. And this one right here along this wall. This wasn't here, of course, like you saw in the picture. Yeah. With that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time from Beverly Hills talking about the murder of Bugsy Siegel and the plane crash of Howard Hughes. Happy Halloween. Oh yeah. Happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I'm in love. my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a-comin' my way 